Hello, everyone. Oh, Welcome wow. to the first stream of the day. My name is Matthew Mercer. I'm the dungeon master for this leg, the next leg of Forced Grey's Adventure. We have a fantastic set of uh, players here to join us for this little endeavor. Uh, so let's go ahead and do a quick round of introductions so you know who will be playing. To the left, we have... Hi, I'm Joe Manganello, and I will be playing Toragar Steel Fist, a.k.a. Toro. I'm Deborah Ann Wall, and I'll be playing Jamila. And my name is Matthew Lillard. I'll be playing Beetle. My name is Ashley Johnson, and I am playing Dagny Halvor. Nice. Um, my name is Kate Welch. I'm playing Rosie B. Stinger. <laughs> Rosie what? Rosie B. Stinger. Nice. Ooh. Thanks, Matthew. Oh, be ready. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So let's go ahead and bring ourselves down into water deep. Nearly six months have passed since the terrible machinations of Aserak and his soulmonger deep beneath the jungles of Chult were thwarted, though at great cost. The bodies that could be recovered from within the deadly tomb were returned to Waterdeep and revived under the directive of the Open Lord, Silverhand. Recovery following the resurrection was slow, and the ranks of Force Grey were disseminated back into the Grey Hands for the time being. The weeks passed pleasantly, leaving the sprawling streets of Waterdeep, the city of splendor, churning away at business as usual. Jamila, in particular, adapting to this urban environment has been a unique challenge. Having grown up in the dense southern jungles of Chult, you stumble through social nuance and the mysteries of this northern land, failing to find any information about the few still missing compatriots that plucked you from Port Nanzaru and pulled you into this larger, more dangerous world. Dagny. You've taken your time after the business with the Rod of Seven Parts to return to the repairs war a warehouse in the Seaward, alongside your host Ogden and his son Sebastian. You house internal conflict between the joys of the simple and tinkering life in the eyes of Gond the Wonderbringer and the missing the rush of adventure you tasted not but a year ago. Now, dusk has settled into the purples and blues of night, or reds and oranges as we now see on the stage. <laughs> And each of you individually feels something thrust into your palm by a cloaked figure. You reach for them, demanding context and reasoning. But they vanish quickly as your eyes find the rolled parchment. Within, the mostly bare missive contains the simple phrases. Cards room. The Green Mask Lodge. Trades ward within the hour. The bottom is marked with a recognizable symbol of Blackstaff Tower. And keep that amongst yourselves. Now, as you individually scatter into the now quickly darkening nighttime in the streets of Waterdeep, you eventually find this green mask lodge you were guided towards. Entering the rather crowded tavern floor, the smells of burnt candle wax and old perfume mingle with the stench of sweat. Rowdy shipping hands and shady patrons watch you pass out of the corner of their eyes before returning to their laughter and revelry. You inquire with the haggard barkeep about the cards room and are pointed toward a corner staircase that descends into a basement chamber fitted with a large game table, a single oil, oil lantern hanging above it to cast long shadows across the back walls. Sitting on the other side of this chamber is a stalky halfling fellow, his square chin matted with stubble. He glances up and offers a nod and a gesture to the first empty seat as you arrive, Rosie. Um, so... Do I know this halfling? You have never met this halfling in your life, but if you want to describe what Rosie looks like. Oh, absolutely. Hmm. So Rosie is, um, she enters this room and she has a, a quarter staff, um, her staff of the master, which is at least twice as tall as she is. She's um, about 100 years old. She is a, a, a white haired little halfling, um, but she is bound, wrapped her arms and her legs uh, clearly someone who has spent time in a monastery. Uh, she moves with uh, the, the prowess of someone who has done a lot of fighting. But she leans heavily on the staff because she loves to pretend that she's real old and weak because <laughs> it gets people right off their feet. So um, she sees this halfling and she squints. Squints right back. She's like, mm, not one of mine. So she'll go and she'll, t she'll take a seat. All right, as the hand gestures to your seat, the door kind of swings open again and you watch as Jamila enters. Mm -hmm. Jamila. Um, you see just like one of the largest women you've ever seen, like six <laughs> foot eight, 
muscles like you've never seen before. Um, and I, I have this oil at my hip, at, at this bottle at my hip that I take out and I pour a little on and just kind of <laughs> rub it in a bit. Um, you know, just to really make them pop. Um, <laughs> And yeah, and I, I come, I see the halfling, and I, I nod. And uh, yeah, I'll just take the seat next to you there. <laughs> There's a, a brief moment of probably uh, back and forth wonder at the two figures that have already made their entrance <laughs> before they hear behind the chamber these heavy thuds. A giant dark hand slams on the side of the door frame and, and enters Toro. Uh, Toro? is seven feet tall. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Always gotta one up me. Come on, man. Uh, he, last time he weighed himself uh, was about <laughs> 343 pounds. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, and uh, he's got big giant horns <laughs> and looks like a giant cow man. Uh, or minotaur. If you're following say, the under dark Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Nova offers a fist bump. Yeah. Do you have any extra baby oil? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking a little ashy. <laughs> Give us a cask of your strongest ale. The halfling kind of points out to the side. You heard the man. Strongest ale. Please sit, Toro. The chair kind of <laughs> creaks at the weight, and there's a moment where you fear it might snap but then you watch the halfling kind of wave a finger and it writes itself. Yeah, and he's wearing black plate armor with these two sheathed, like, they're, they're scimitars, <laughs> but they're the size of long swords. These uh, giant golden scimitars. Jamila wears no armor, because armor's for wimps. <laughs> <laughs> can I shove her off her stool? <laughs> you, you can. You can try. <laughs> Are we doing this? Yeah. Okay, right, cool. It's contested okay, athletics. Both of you guys yeah, make athletics checks. Athletic. Okay, great. Ooh, ooh. Did you crit? No, but that'll be a 25. Okay, she doesn't fall. <laughs> <laughs> it's like slamming your hand into a very thick wall. You pushed over a few small walls in your time, but this is one of the thicker variety. Doesn't budge at all. Okay. Rosie is I with, smile. Rosie's with the halfling in the corner, and she's watching this, and as soon as this happens, she's like, oh, she hands over a gold piece. <laughs> <laughs> the halfling takes it and suddenly puts it into a pocket. Uh, at this point, uh, you hear the strange whirring noise, like a, some, like gears grinding and some high-pitched <laughs> And you hear a kind of a voice gently curse as something seems to have gone awry with it and enters. You see Dagny fiddling with some sort of device. Shit. Uh, yeah, so um, Dagny is a half orc cleric, grayish skin, um, leather armor, just all of the trinkets. She <laughs> is an inventor, a tinkerer, and uh, a little uncomfortable with people. <laughs> and um, barrettes in her hair, you know, trying to pull it together a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah. As Dagny comes and has a seat at the halfling's offering there, God. not but a moment later, you see this shape kind of <laughs> appear in the doorway with the sudden swiftness you weren't expecting, though shorter and squatter than you expect, as you see Beetle enter the chamber. Beetle! <laughs> <laughs> Somebody called! Beetle. The dwarf. Unbelievably lithe, long beard. He's got a leather strap tying it together. He's got a leather thing over his head like this. He's filthy. And he says, somebody said strongest ale. Have a seat. So he'll like, he'll kind of like do like a little, like a flip into the chair and land perfectly. Can I do a roll? You may, acrobatics. Uh, so that's uh, an 18. You have the most majestic Riker. No. Fish landing <laughs> I've ever seen. Just over the top down land. It's quite beautiful. Ladies. <laughs> at, at that point, you watch as the halfling kind of wiggles a finger and these series of ale casks all kind of hover in independently and align themselves with people who have not been served drink at this point. The two strongest in front of those that requested it. At which point, the halfling waves a hand and the door <laughs> slams shut behind you, leaving just the five of you and this mysterious creature across the table from you with the low lit lantern light kind of hanging overhead, almost giving an interrogation room type sense. At which point you watch as the image of the halfling slowly dissipates from bottom up, 
revealing below what appears to be uh, a woman's form of dark hair, indigo blue eyes, olive skin. And for those who have met them before, you recognize this as the Blackstaff Vajra herself. Her hardened expression shifts to a polite, if forced, smile. Welcome, Grey Hands. I'm grateful for your relative haste in answering my summons. We have among us newer talents who've proven capable in the eyes of the open lord and myself. And gestures to Rosie, gestures to Toro, and then to Beetle with a bit of apprehension. <laughs> I call upon you now as whispers move with alacrity and I have not the patience for rumors or pleasantries. Tomorrow evening, in celebration of the turn of the season, a number of powerful figures across Waterdeep and beyond will be attending an event called the Lord's Ball. Such a gathering promises to have its own layers of intrigue and devilry, but what I require your aid in is regarding an out-of-town guest who arrived for this ball. One merchant mage who goes by the name Adinus Ravensgar. Now, Adinus visits from the forest kingdom of Cormir, a fairly respected arcanist and wealthy businessman within the land of the Purple Dragon. However, the trail behind his arrival strikes as dubious, and we, within Blackstaff Tower, have been unable to locate the origins of his otherwise legitimate-looking invitation. I've met him once before, and both his penchant for double talk and well-obfuscated business ventures make me wary from the start. And it doesn't help that he's apparently carried an infatuation for me as well. <laughs> he's arrived not but two days ago, staying within the city-owned Quartermain estate located in the heart of the Northward, he has invited me to dine with him tonight, wishing to discuss some possible partnership or diplomatic business with the Order of Magists. I have responded by accepting, but sending a group of proxies in my stead until after the Lord's Ball. You are to be my proxies. Hmm? I do not trust this man, and I believe his ulterior motives to this visit must be discovered. Beyond that, I have my theories regarding his business that require proof to confirm my suspicions. He wards his person from divination well, so more direct means are required. I'm asking you to attend this dinner in my stead this evening. Ply our guests for information. Scour the premises as stealthily and carefully as you can without gathering his ire <laughs> or suspicion and acquire what information and proof you can of his dealings and bring them back to me. Can I count on you? What's in it for us? Well, beyond being now under the watchful eye, tutelage, and the protection of the Blackstaff herself, you will be compensated in both gold, influence, and perhaps access to some of the more uh, Dubious elements of water deep, should you require it, oh, Beetle. Glorious. <laughs> Leaning forward, the shadows grow darker over her face as her intimidating presence pushes forward. The immense power the black staff holds kind of wells out from beyond her visage across the table, and you can't help but feel the sense that you're in the presence of someone who has been around and seen some shit. <laughs> <laughs> Are we in agreement then? Well, if you wanted a uh, stealthy reconnaissance group, you kind of recruited a strange <laughs> collection here. Beggars can't be choosers in these times, Rosie. We do the best we can. Are you sure you don't want him dead? <laughs> Preferably not, but if it comes to that, I leave the choice in your favor and the repercussions as well. Okay, I'm in. Uh, <laughs> I step forward and I, I kneel before her and say, I owe you my life. Um, I will do this for without money. Uh, but in huh. this, we shall be, we should, we, uh, my debt is paid. I'll take her money. <laughs> I appreciate that. And it shall be remembered by both me and the open lord. Thank you, Jamila. Dagny, it has been some time. Are you up to the task? Yes, I've, I've, I've actually been waiting 
for you guys to call upon me again. Very well. I reinstate my dominion as your overseer for this mission. I thank you, and do me proud once more, Force Grey. She reaches back into a small satchel you see at her side and pulls out what appears to be a scroll that is tightly wound with a leather strap that's kind of locked into what looks to be a small locking device. This will probably prove helpful in this endeavor, so use it wisely. He can't read. <laughs> You'll have but an hour before it's magic. Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> There's a brief moment where you see like the left eye of Vajra twitch, realizing that maybe Honestly, do I know where the north is in the north? <laughs> See, you know where the ball. north you know the yeah. north ward is in the city. Um, it, it tends to be where a lot of the uh, the nobles and the more upper class uh, members of society here in Waterdeep mm -hmm. live. So you know where it is, though you haven't spent a lot of time there necessarily. No, for sure. Not. Um, but if you want to uh, go ahead and make a uh, let's see what would be going this one. Make it a good one. <laughs> um, uh, go ahead and make a, just a general intellect check. Sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. Um, you've heard of various clusters of the North War before and kind of acquired information in the past uh, of, of where, the, uh, where the, the elements of the local noble stay and where some that are kind of either lost power or empty estates are. And so guiding the rest of the group, if you all decide to follow your new dwarven leader, oh, cool. um, make your way through until eventually you do come upon the Quartermain estate. Uh, the bustling city itself is kind of coming to life in the night. You can feel the energy rising in preparation for this Lord's Ball the, uh, in the following evening, uh, especially in the North Ward. Um, you're dodging carriages and odd high-end street vendors as you push past until eventually you come upon the beautiful two-story home, maybe 10 or more rooms at first glance throughout its, its construct. The uh, blue-gray painted exterior and dark uh, rooting greet you as you approach the front door. There's a heavy oak door right there that just kind of stands ominously preventing entry. So as we go, I mean, do we want to talk plan before we yeah. actually show up and knock on the door? <laughs> we have an invitation without, like, with our names on. You do? Yes. Right. Okay. okay. As, as proxy to the uh, Blackstaff. Okay. Is this the kind of uh, ball where we would need to pretend that we are fancier than we are? No offense. N none You're all taken. very... Why are you looking the at ball, me? The ball's <laughs> tomorrow night. The ball's tomorrow night. <laughs> this, we're, we're just this here is, to... This is a private dinner with right. this individual. Okay. Okay. We're, we're holding space until she shows up. Got it. Or he shows up. Okay. Okay. Um, but to, to find information... Yeah. And kill someone. <laughs> to find information. Find information. Right? Yeah. That's the mission. Okay. Right? Yes, to, to find out what his true purpose is. Okay. So, so, I mean, I can go in, I can go in stealth and I can go in invisible and see what I can find on my own. I always think splitting up yeah. such a fantastic idea. Yeah. And right off the bat, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. <laughs> <We can't go. laughs> um... <clears throat> I mean, I think we're, we, we can go. So, I mean, we can go in together and play nice. Sure. Mm. Yeah. And talk open. And, I mean, the great thing then, about the spell then, is we can, we yeah, can talk converse and as we go. He okay. wants to sneak away sure. while we've got him distracted. Okay. Rather than go in without him. Don't anybody. hurt him. <laughs> got it. Oh, man. <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> um, All right. I feel like that's a real shoddy plan, but let's go. Yeah. <laughs> we got nine really. minutes, you guys. Yeah, okay, yeah. let's go. And roll the dish. We attack. Oh, yeah, that was a crit. And I rolled a crit. Oh, there um, you go. No, I'll, right as we get to the front entrance, I'll cast the I'll cast the spell that, she, that she's given us. Okay. Ooh. Um, All right. Because so it's an hour. An hour. It's, it's an hour. Right? It lasts yeah. for an hour, correct. Right. So, so there is a bit of a time so limit before you are unable to use this for communication. So there's a little bit of haste to the now, time. Now, do we, uh, does it, does he have to speak it out loud to cast it? Like, what is it? Uh, you, you do have to speak it out loud, though not like volume, right. you know, in, in the space there. But you can take a moment before you go ahead and, and mark or make 
make aware of your presence at the table or at the, at the uh, location. So you want to step off to the side for Yeah, I think so. Unroll the scroll, look through, kind of mutter your way through the incantation. Go ahead and make an arcana check for okay. me if you could. I just rolled a crit. Rolled I know. Oh! I rolled a crit just a second ago, though. Um, I rolled a two. You rolled a two. <laughs> <laughs> but remember that time I rolled a crit? No. Uh, right. So, <laughs> so four. So it takes you a little longer to read through it. I just realized I don't want to be in either of their heads. That's all. As you're going through, it, you, 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 you hear this, this confident dwarf as he reads over and gets halfway through. He's like, you start stuttering through the words and kind of pouring through it a bit. You know, kind of having to look back and you're kind of start muttering, you know, Evil Dead style, what you think it should be under your breath. Um, it manages to finally trigger. Thank you. After the period of about 30 minutes of you all patiently oh. waiting for him to finish casting the scroll. Oh Relax, I got this. As your leader, I come in and sit down one. At which point you can watch, like, occasionally on the street nearby, you see, like, couples walking by arm in arm, kind of glance by the large minotaur who's, like, scraping its foot on the ground impatiently, pacing in front of these nice gardens that surround the exterior of this estate. Drink, drinking heavily. Okay, let's go. I what have you got? Let's All right, some contested strength checks, right. guys. Correct! <laughs> So. Here's the great thing. You, as soon as you finish the spell, all of your minds suddenly feel the strange tug, which is just enough to distract Toro as he gets thrown back, slamming into the door of the chamber. Oh. You see the wood kind of breaks and splintering a little bit. Son of a bitch. <laughs> I like this one, she's spicy. <laughs> a moment later, the door slowly unlocks. And you see as what looks to be a uh, a somewhat gaunt-looking half-elven woman peek through in, in very formal uh, silk blouse and long pants. Hello? Can you get in? We're here to party. <laughs> so, I am to believe you are the proxies for the Black Staff, correct? Yes. It says it on this piece of paper. Let I'll, me see that, please. I'll hand it over. <laughs> see? Proxies. Very well. Um, and just takes a moment to kind of individually look over each of you with a curious, <laughs> stop, stopping at Rosie going. <laughs> Equal opportunity, I appreciate that. Uh, opens the door entirely, though it takes a moment for her to actually drag it open as part of it's now slightly off the hinge and grinding against the floor of the foyer. Uh, enter and please wait here a moment. I will go uh, let the master know that our uh, guests have arrived. And as you enter the chamber, uh, you uh, see immediately the beautiful interior of the walls are off-white and detailed with gold leaf and a double staircase across the way with brass railing that twists up on both sides, uh, kind of accent the guide to the second floor and a hallway that descends further into the household. Uh, the, the servant uh, turns around to the rest of you. My name is Mona. If you require anything, do let me know. Continues up the stairway and vanishes down the hallway, leaving you all alone for a few precious moments in this foyer <laughs> to discuss amongst yourselves what you wish to do. Okay, quick question. Would you maybe want to go invisible now? It's so a little late. Missing? Well, but when we see him, he'll think there's only four of us? Or are we too late? I feel like that it's moment's too gone. Late. Okay. <laughs> I feel like we had that chance. I know, and then I threw him in Curses. the wall. Curses. We'll say you got sick. You, have to <laughs> you go went home. home. <laughs> I might actually get sick. <laughs> um, do, do I see any kind of indication of business paperwork laying around? Make a perception check. Okay. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope. nope. I think I'm indoors. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a five. A five. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you go. Your your eyes try and zone in on anything that could be of useful information, but instead are lost in the beautiful decor. And for a moment there, you start instead taking in and logging possible notes for how you can eventually use some of these spaces <laughs> uh, uh, to better. Better decorate your own home. <laughs> <laughs> You're briefly lost in your own HGTV world here in the foyer. I have a belt of dwarven kind. You do. Could I look from looking at the outside of the building? Could I look in this room to see where the doors are and if maybe there were rooms that are not connected? Like maybe there's a, a place where there was a secret door, perhaps a room that wasn't connected, it didn't have a. a Make an investigation check. Okay. This is you kind of like coming close to the edges of the wall while you have this moment to kind of inspect. Okay. Very, very stealthily clomping through <laughs> this foyer. So go for it. Okay. That's a two. 
Okay. <laughs> With a, that's a minus one, which was a three, which so gave me a two. You, 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 there, to, to the right and left side of this foyer, there are two archways that lead into two different chambers that are both not lit. They're just dark inside. You begin to look around the left side, and as you curve around, you can see what looks to be uh, a lightly furnished, almost like a living room, and a faint light in the distance to what appears to be a kitchen. Mm. Mm. You do smell a little bit of food being, being cooked, and as you begin to approach, you see one large shadow kind of shift right into that doorway over what looks to be the stove and countertop area of the kitchen, what appears to be a large, almost nine-foot-tall, solid stone humanoid figure that <laughs> grabs a pot and turns around and then heads out of the doorway, lost into the kitchen. Like a construct. A construct mm -hmm. of some kind that is apparently preparing dinner. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Is there, Dance. so it's gone now, there's nothing in the kitchen? It's in the kitchen, oh. <laughs> but, the, but the room before it, the kind of living room space that's uh, dark is left open. Is the construct hot? Uh, make a perception check. Okay. Hot? <laughs> like, isn't sexy? Yeah. Awesome. It's a 17. 17. <laughs> if you're into that kind of thing, <laughs> it's more lithe than your common construct. You do notice that that it's it's the detailing in it is stone, uh, in nature, uh, but as opposed to a giant burly, you know, protective. Uh, golem, if you will. Mm. This one has thinner arms and seems to be more designed to be dexterous. In fact, you mm -hmm. see, as opposed to giant hammer fists, while they could probably still do some damage, they're very intricate and working and manipulating the tools of the kitchen uh, much better than you'd expect a golem mm -hmm. to. And you, Rosie, are you a fan of the culinary arts? Oh, yes. It, you are very attracted to this golem. <laughs> <laughs> I like what he does with his hands. <laughs> <laughs> the strangest entryway ever. <laughs> okay. At this point, Mona appears at the top of the stairway. I'm sorry for the wait. Right this way, the master will see you now. Okay. He turns around and enters the long hallway, kind of expectantly waiting for you to follow. As you guys ascend the stairs, you make your way to the top area that leads into the long hallway. You cross two doorways, closed doors, one on the left, then about 10 feet ahead of that one on the right and the hallway curves, or ends and curves to the left and immediately ends in what is a large arched door, a doorway with two open doors that are opened internally into the hall. As I'll, I'll, I'll stand in the, I'll go in the back, I'll let everyone go in front, the two mm -hmm. giant people, yes. and as we go by those doors, I'm gonna stop and try to get a quick listen. See if I hear anything on the other side. Make perception check. Right, they're in front of me, she's moving, 17. Mm -hmm. So perception is, uh, hold on one sec. As I get through the new fin-dangled, uh, 19. 19. Uh, stopping for a moment and placing your ear against the wood door, you listen, no noise. How about the one on the right? You go ahead and place your ear to that one, no noise either. Both okay. appear to be perfectly silent and still on the opposite end of that doorway. Awesome, <laughs> thank you. All right, Mona sits there and awaits you all to eventually cross the threshold into the curve, making your way into this next lit chamber. So. Looking up past these two doors, you see what looks to be a somewhat gaudy dining chamber. A long, kind of rectangular table sits, adorned with small candelabra and uh, what appear to be some small place settings with high back chairs that are kind of uh, flanking each side of this table. Across the way, you can see a fireplace with a crackling flame light that is kind of burning up behind, lighting what looks to be the silhouette of another high backed chair, while a number of these kind of slightly shifting glowing orange arcane light sources kind of stay locked in place, just ever so faintly vibrating and shifting in the air above to keep the rest of the room lit. Mona walks in before you and takes a chair on the far left of the chamber in the corner to just keep an eye on everything in the room. Damn it. <laughs> and there you see, sitting in the chair across the way from where these empty seats now are waiting for your arrival, you see what appears to be the master, the individual who had invited the black staff you see what looks to be a human man in his mid-40th decade, uh, a combed mop of dirty blonde hair on the top of his head that shortens in the sides, merging with a graying beard that frames his chin, mustacheless. His hands are encrusted in uh, bejeweled rings and bracelets folded across his dark blue and gold-trimmed vest and blue-gray silk tunic from underneath. His skin is tanned evenly, and you swear you spent a, hot of, uh, a spot of makeup at the corners of his features. Um, does he have a white cat in his lap? <laughs> he does not have a white cat in his lap. Yeah, does he spin around like this? <laughs> uh, were you Rosie? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, in fact, as you approach, he doesn't realize you're coming that quickly. He goes like, oh, turns around. <laughs> and then makes his proper entrance. 
slowly nodding to himself like, yes. <laughs> his arms <laughs> unfold and with his palms up towards you, he kind of stands up from his chair and goes, welcome friends of the Black Staff to my temporary abode. I am Lord Adinus Ravenscar, representative of the House Ravensgar and the Guild of Loyal Vessels of Cormier. It is my honor to have you join me for dinner this evening. So please, do sit down, or uh, our feast should be prepared shortly. Mm. Uh, have a seat, have a seat. Delicious. <laughs> well, wait till you taste the food. I cannot Trust wait. Me, my friend. <laughs> drink, do you have drink? Drinks, drinks will be provided as well. Uh, Mona! And uh, Mona sits up. Go and uh, fetch us some drinks, please, while uh, our friend prepares the meals. I'll help you, and I'll go with her. <laughs> I'll start to move out the room with her. Okay. Um, you kind of walk alongside Mona. Uh, I, I can very well get this for you, Sarah. You sure? Look it. I'll help you. Look how big he is. Make a persuasion check. Oh, God, thank God. <laughs> uh, 12. She goes, I appreciate the offer, but I'm a strong woman and can take care of myself. Please do sit down. Don't say I never offered. <laughs> <laughs> Mona leaves the chamber, closing the doors behind as you all kind of take your seats around. So, um, I would like to uh, parlay a conversation. I would like to know what you are about. How, how is it you have risen up to become the chosen proxies of such a majestic and beautiful figure as Vajra herself? Um, I must say, this is quite a uh, motley display. <laughs> um, uh, you, in particular, I am very fascinated and curious, my friend. What is your name and where do you hail from? My name is Torogar Steelfist. My friends call me Toro, but I don't have any friends. <laughs> Toro, good to know this. <laughs> Very well. And uh, how is it that you have uh, gained the, uh, the privilege of working beneath the Black Staff? I am a wealthy landowner, and I was <laughs> looking at buying some property in the North Ward area. I was wondering if you could recommend a good realtor. <laughs> Make a deception check. Amazing. <laughs> that was amazing. <clears throat> Come on. Every confidence is going to work. Oh, jeez. Okay, that's it. That's it for that die. Oh. oh. <clears throat> it is a, a 10. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, his, his fingers re-entwine and the eyes narrow a bit with a bit of a smile as his head kind of cocks in your direction. Interesting, my friend. I perhaps may have some contacts that could help you with that. Uh, please do hold that thought. Interesting. Uh, moving on. Uh, you, my dear, you uh, seem to be uh, as uh, mighty as your uh, friend here. Where do you hail from and by what do you uh, grace us with your presence? Uh, first, I'd like to ask, do I have any uh, recognition or knowledge of this? Is it Cormea? Cormier. Cormier. Uh, you can go ahead and make a history check if you'd like. Mm, just a 10. 10? Uh, as a girl who grew up in the southern jungle of Shoal, you have no idea. <laughs> okay. You've heard it mentioned a couple times, okay. and like in your head, you're like, wait, pur thing. purple dragons. There's, pu there's purple dragons everywhere. It's got to be amazing. You have no idea. Okay, damn it. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I say, um, I look at him and say, uh, I believe that uh, honesty is always, always the best policy. I see. Very nice. I am new here to Waterdeep, and I am fascinated by uh, the cultures here. And I thought uh, uh, maybe you could enlighten me as to uh, um, uh, sites in the city that I should take. Or within here. Well, uh, <laughs> I myself have been a couple of times. I've seen some uh, very beautiful things. There are a great many uh, parks you could see, green trees. Um, there are, uh, it's, it's actually pretty bland here. Komir is so much more beautiful in my opinion. Um, however, one of the things that is very interesting, uh, we are uh, hoping to do some business regarding the, uh, the walking uh, statues you see within the city. Ah. The, the gargantuan, uh, majestic uh, uh, stone people, um, if you will. Uh, some of them have been seen in some disrepair over the years, and uh, the business that I work in happens to perhaps be able to help in this endeavor. So I am very interested in discussing with you folks and uh, perhaps uh, the Blackstaff how we could find a beneficial arrangement. Yes, what business is that that you are in? 
Uh, well, you see, uh, the, the Guild of Loyal Vessels, of which I am a, a co-founder of, we are a number of mage uh, uh, merchants and, and, and uh, purveyors in the realm of constructing and imbuing arcane uh, locomotion to otherwise inanimate objects, um, the creation of constructs and such. Um, and we have come to believe that we have not only been able to maintain upkeep, but to develop and perhaps uh, sell off a number of protective uh, entities as such to those who would be able to pay. So if any of you happen to have quite a bit of coin and don't want to bother with whacking uh, your enemies yourselves, maybe not so much for you two, but if you're so interested, we can make that business deal for you. At which point the doors open and Mona returns with what looks to be uh, a bottle of nice heavy red wine, like a big, big old bottle. Gunnigan's going around and pouring each of your glasses. Uh, Yes, uh, any other questions you may have, please feel free to ask. Uh, I actually, um, I have to go to the bathroom <laughs> and just wash my hands before eating. Is there, is it close? Uh, it is downstairs uh, to the left of the foyer chamber. It's a bit dark, Still but I gather it's probably not too difficult for you. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll find it, I'll find it. Very well. Yes, thank you so much. I'll be no worries. so quick. I have to go too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll flip up back out of the seat. Later, Raven's car. I mean, I'll be right back. I'll okay. take this sip of wine and I'll go right after. Very well. Uh, do not be long. The food should be arriving shortly. You got it. Real quick, just a quick hand Real wash. Quick. That's okay. All right, be back quickly. As you both leave the chamber, uh, Mona closes the doors behind them. Um, as he glances down at the uh, the glasses that have been uh, placed before you, he's like, please, enjoy, drink. The wine here is quite rare, actually. It's uh, Lathander's Red, pulled from one of the casks, uh, salvaged after the fire that took Lathander's Light, the temple. Uh, enjoy it, for that glass full you have it cost more than probably your annual pay. <laughs> ah, at which point, as you guys are exiting into the hallway, you make your way down to where the curvature turns to the right, and as you do, immediately, the looming figure <coughs> steps right where you are, and you see before you a large stone golem, two arms filled with covered domed metallic platters, <laughs> just waiting for you to pass. You're both kind of hit this moment where it's just unable to move until you go around it. Oh, wow, that looks... Delicious. So good. Delicious. I'm just gonna take a little peek under there. All right, as you pull it up, the scent comes to you, and it's it's delightful. It smells like like spiced, uh, cooked duck, roasted almost with, with with steamed vegetables, kind of encased around the outside of it. It's quite. It smells quite nice. Oh, well, I'm gonna go wash my hands, <laughs> and then I'm gonna get into that. So put that on the table, and we'll be right back. <laughs> and it kind of muscles back. You both have to kind of step out of the way as it makes its way down the rest of the chamber, uh, pushes past the doors <laughs> with its elbows and enters. You guys watch the golem mm -hmm. enter and begin to set the platter. Uh, or it stands there in the center and kind of waits. I, uh, when, I, when I see the golem enter, it's like a choir of angels starting yeah. to sing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, we can't keep meeting like this. <laughs> the golem still stares straight forward, mm. <laughs> not acknowledging anything until eventually you watch as uh, Lord Dines goes, Draza! And you watch as all the uh, sigils on the golem flash and light up for just a second. Please, serve our guests. At which point the golem moves forward, sets the platters under the table, lifts the domes off of the steam, rises up and the smell permeates the chamber. Beautiful combination of cooked vegetables and meats and what smells like a, like a starchy, almost garlicky potato paste. Um, it looks beautiful, and one by one, the golem kind of comes by and begins serving it onto each platter. Uh, you start feeling like a child, almost, as all this is being presented before you by this entity. Uh, at which point, uh, the uh, Adinas goes, uh, thank you, Rendos. Uh, Rendos is one of my many creations. Uh, we provide to the lords and ladies with the dragons to pay for them, of course. Uh, it took some time to design the right enchantment alterations uh, to impart culinary skills, but overall, I'm happy with the outcome. Uh, try the food for yourself. Tell me whether or not you feel it is as impressive as I hope. Uh, before we dig in here, can you tell me a little bit about it? Where, what uh, cuisine is this? Uh, would you bring it from Cormier? I actually do not know. Part what? of the enchantment is that it kind of makes its own meal. <laughs> it's the idea is that you don't have to worry about it. It's kind of a thing we're trying out. So I'm literally very excited to see how you think it is, because that would be important feedback. Minotaurs <laughs> eat with their hands. Sorry. With their hooves? <laughs> I have I have finger. <laughs> okay, let's just start eating. All right. Uh, it's all right. It's a little bland, to be honest. It looks a lot better than it tastes. And actually, a lot of it just seems to have borderline become the same 
sense of spices, mm. like a heavy pepper, uh, almost like a, like, a, like a cayenne spice to it, but everything tastes like that. The textures change, but the food is pretty universal. Not some sort of poison. Uh, <laughs> would I need to roll for that? <laughs> no, you don't. Okay. <laughs> Do I start gagging? Not yet. <laughs> yeah. Not, yet. Not yet. Okay. Okay. All right. So as you guys are beginning to dig into this meal, uh, he goes. The uh, the golem finishes serving and then sits there and just kind of stands there, kind of in a a, a, a blanket space of nothing. Adina kind of waits and goes. Traza! All the sigils light up once more and it kind of comes to life. Return to the kitchen and remain as my sentinel, please. And the golem begins to walk away. I watch him go. <laughs> Hate, hate to see him leave. Uh, so as the, as the golem exits the chamber, the, the, the glyphs fading as he does so, making his way into the darkness, the, closing the doors behind them. So, Rendos, uh, what, is the, uh, what is the opinion of the meal provided? Mm, it could use some spice. <laughs> really? Okay. <laughs> Oh, I have detailed feedback for you. Um, it's oversalted. It tastes like the duck was cooked about 10 minutes too long. No one likes steamed vegetables. I don't know why you would even program that Hold on in. just a moment, please. Mona, Mona, write this down, please. And Mona just pulls out a notepad and starts writing furiously. Continue. Uh, really could use a carb, uh, just, just to balance it out. Love, love some freshness. We get some fresh veggies in here. I just, you know, I can, I can, uh, um, I can meet with, uh, what was it, Rendos, and Rendos. have a, a thorough conversation if that's <laughs> useful for you. Uh, should, should you wish, uh, as soon as you finish your meal, of course. I, I would be very interested. I did not know you were so uh, intuitive, both with the uh, food and the, uh, the constructs uh, you know, presentation. Mm. What is your background? Um, well, uh, I, I, you know, I'm just a grandma. <laughs> I just love to cook. I do love to cook for my kids, my grandkids. Got hundreds of them. So I've made my fair share of bad meals. I know exactly where you're coming from right now. Don't even worry about this. Make a general charisma check. Ah, jeez, okay. <laughs> uh, it's oh. a 17. 17? Yeah. He smiles and seems genuinely charmed. And, and it's just like, wow, that is a hundred. That, you have been a very busy woman. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot imagine. I hope to maybe have children one day, but uh, the experimentation we delve in sometimes does not make that quite so easy. They're overrated. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, you were asking us earlier what our relationship was to the, the Vajra. Yes, please. Um, and I wanted to mention, now that, now that it's just us, I, I wouldn't say this in front of everyone else, but the Vajra and I have had some some dealings, some under the table work. Um, and I don't know, I'm, I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a man who might work under the table. Am I right about that? Uh, maybe. Okay. It's kind of like his eyes start shifting back towards Mona, Mona's eyes from him. Define further what kind of business. I do not wish to break any laws here while present in Waterdeep. Understand, I am a very respectable businessman, but do go on, I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I were a cop, I'd have to tell you. And I'm not. <laughs> so. I see no holes in your logic. How could I possibly <laughs> question this I endeavor? I, know. I just, I feel like we might be able to, and. Correct me if I'm wrong, you two. Mm. We might be able to make some, some money together. Hmm. Very well. Well, let us see where this conversation takes us. Let's. At which point, we're going to go ahead and head back to the interior of the hallway where we have Dagny and Beetle are currently making their way to the restroom. So hey. the golem has passed <laughs> you and is currently serving dinner. What are you guys doing? Hey, well, OK. Go. Do you want to go? What, do you want to go right? Do you want to go left? I don't know where to go. You, I'm gonna follow you, and I'm gonna make sure you're I, all right. I need to wash my hands. Not really. <laughs> no, I really needed to wash my hands. I, I thought it was a distraction. All right, you go wash your hands. It as, we're, okay. so as we start to make our way towards the, the, I'm sure they have a restroom in this place, the commode. Uh, there is, it's downstairs and to the left. So we're gonna go downstairs to the left, and as we're going through, I'm trying every door. Okay, the two doorways that you come across, yeah. that you had seen on the way in, the first one, it's locked. 
Give me a second. Open it. I'll, I'll try to pick it. All right, go ahead and uh, roll and add your dexterity modifier and your proficiency modifier. Uh, okay, hold on a sec. Pretend like you're doing something else. <laughs> Turn um, on the water really loud. Uh, While Dagny's downstairs just scrubbing, scrubbing, exfoliating. Real good. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm gonna say 13. 13? <laughs> yeah. I'm making that number up. <laughs> There's a couple pluses. What'd you roll? I rolled a nine. Um, what's your dexterity? My dex is a plus three. All and right. Then, so there's twelve. And what's your proficiency 12. bonus? And then my proficiency bonus is where on this three, thing? I don't right? use computers. Yeah. I, I love seven and show you. It's gonna be higher. Oh. Okay, good. Yeah. So that's a fifteen. So it's fifteen. 15. 15. I usually use paper. I'm sorry. I'm not used to. <laughs> no, no, that's knowledge. good. That's you're good. so fancy here. That's good. <laughs> so it takes you a moment. You're you're pulling out your lock picks and you're getting. Into the bit, you feel the first tumbler, the second tumbler, the third one kind of like sticks and sticks, and you're like, and you hear, oh, oh, yeah, Draza, into the kitchen, and be my sentinel, and you hear the steps coming louder and louder. How close am I? Uh, at that point, the final tumbler hits. I go, I open, get it, get it. Door opens. Open, yeah. All right, and you dump it. I run across. Yeah, yeah, go okay. ahead. And shut the door. Well, you're downstairs washing your hands. <laughs> oh, I thought we were. Oh, I thought you were together. Right I thought we were together. Yeah, oh no, yeah, we did a too. triple party split. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> no, we never do a triple party split. <laughs> All right, so okay, so I thought we were together. Okay, if, like, if you guys are together, then you're waiting for him to finish yeah, washing yeah. the door. Yeah. yeah. So you never got to washing your hands. That your hands are still filthy. Oh, <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> filthy. I hate being dirty. <laughs> okay. All right, so you guys try and duck in rapidly. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, both of you make stealth check to make sure you don't make any noise trying to rush in there quickly. Oh great. Okay. <laughs> It's a rendo I know I have corner. proficiency of um, at least the 16, 17, 18, 19, 19. 19. I have two. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. All right. As you as you, as you rush into the room, <laughs> Dagny comes rushing in, and your foot catches the door frame, and actually a piece of the wood <laughs> splinters oh. inward. And you're like, ah! It hurts your toe, and you're like stubbing it, and you're trying to hold back the pain, but you're like, oh! you close the door, and you hear the footsteps, <laughs> and stop just outside the door. I'll cast. What do you cast? Um, I will cast a um, minor illusion. So I'll cast a sound. Okay. Down from where, if he was going to continue, I'll cast it down. Ow, oh my gosh! Oh, so I'll cast a, um, a, a small cry. Ow! Down the hallway. Okay. So as uh, if it continue. Does the spell require a visual, oh, sorry, uh, no, it's verbal. Component, yeah, yeah no, verbal. No. So, so you should be fine. Okay, so you glance down, kind of under the little gap of the doorway, and kind of like, Gah! focus. Ow! Go ahead and make a uh, deception check for me. Nice! 14 is my number. Okay. Um, and then deception is plus two, so plus 16. 16, good. Okay. You hear in the distance the echoing, ow! Down in kind of the foyer area. A moment passes. Nothing. Another moment. <laughs> the footsteps. I, I thought he was gonna come in here. <laughs> I thought he was gonna come in here. I, thought, I thought you were gonna, gonna go to the bathroom. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I just let's look around. Oh, we'll peek around. What okay. do we got? You are in what appears to be uh, a decent bedroom designed as guest quarters within this area. Um, Looks like there are two beds in here, though only one of them appears to have been utilized recently and attempted to be put back in place. Uh, but uh, at the base of the bed is a travel trunk that is currently closed, and a lot of the furniture in here has a coating of dust except for that bed. I will check over the trunk real quick. I'll go to the trunk and check it for traps real quick. All right, make Possible. an inve investigation check. Ooh, 15, so I'm gonna say um, 20. The trunk is trapped. Hey, hey. Ooh. It's a good call, Matt Lillard. <laughs> Come on, let's hear from Matt Lillard. Um, I'm gonna try to disarm it. You hear, right. you hear a voice in your head. Oh, good, oh, yeah. yeah. Right. You guys can talk to each other. Oh, yeah. Oh, Is the bathroom clean? <laughs> Do they have towels or paper? I mean, we, we, actually, off the spell. We, we, we haven't gone in there yet. I, but I really, really want to wash my hands, but we're busy with some other stuff. But I'll let you know once I go in there to wash my hands, how the towels and everything. The mashed potatoes are not that good. 
Really, they smelled super good. It's not let, that good. Let us know if you need any help. Okay, copy that over and out, Roger. Let me know if I should kill this guy yes, let's and know. come down there or not. Let's let's not when the I am trying to focus. <laughs> so go ahead, go ahead and roll a thieves' tools check. So roll again and then add uh, three plus three. So it's plus six to this roll. Okay, so it's twelve. I have luck, so I can re-roll a d20. You can. Today. I'm gonna take that re-roll. <laughs> Probably a good idea. Okay. <laughs> go ahead and re-roll. Oh, 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 oh. oh. here's, here's the thing. We're no. only playing for an hour and a half. <laughs> go for it. Double luck. I feel like. Yeah. Double luck. Hold on. Does oh. double luck work? I don't know. Does I don't, it work like I don't, that? I don't think that you can. It's only one per you turn, You can only get lucky once. This guy's nodding. <laughs> <laughs> that roll? He knows. <laughs> It's you like, have uh, to, it's like to take the role. It's like who wants to be a millionaire? We'll just pull the crowd. <laughs> That's right. You have to take Can the you role. use luck more than the once a, a turn? No. Uh, no. Okay. All right, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame me. Blame them. <laughs> so, I need you to roll a Constitution saving throw. Oh, no. oh, <laughs> How's it going with the chest? <laughs> <laughs> I can't breathe. Right. <laughs> we have total faith in you. A natural one. Oh. I can reroll. Okay. Nine. <laughs> Nine plus Ten, Nine. eleven. So plus two. It's eleven. It's eleven. It's eleven. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. I didn't want to be a fourth grade anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Come in, Beto. <laughs> So, as you as you kind of lower yourself to this 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 leather trunk, this travel trunk, get down with your thieves' tools and begin to find what seems to be the the mechanism that triggers when the yep. trunk is open without some sort of a specific uh, key or or a certain button is not held down in the process. And as you do, your hand just fires off, and you watch as it opens up slightly. And in that moment, there's a, a slight high whine sound. There's a flash of light, and this dark purple kind of cloud of powder just poof into your face. You back away for a second, <coughs> coughing, and your lungs are on fire. Oh! Evasion! <laughs> <laughs> Technically not an attack, it's a hazard, my friend. Well, okay. You do suffer 16 points of poison damage, Ooh. and are poisoned for the next 20 minutes. What's in the trunk? <laughs> All right, so as you open the trunk, you uh, make an investigation check to see what you can. I don't want to roll anymore. Jack, <laughs> uh, do you want to take I'll it? Open. You got it open. <laughs> That's okay, that'll go away. I can take care of it, but you got it open. That's a really good job. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. All right, so go ahead and make an investigation check, please, as you begin to rummage through the contents of this trunk. Ooh. That's a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a six. You rolled a six? <laughs> As you kind of come back to it, like, your voice is a little strained from the poison, but you managed to, to get most of it out of your system, though your body's still kind of pulsing with this horrible, searing pain. Uh, you watch Dagny just essentially barely touch it, kind of like looks in, like the person who goes to their pantry and moves two things and goes like, no, nah, we're, we're out of pasta. <laughs> She's like, there's nothing in here. And you saw like four things she pushed past and made I, see, I see that, I immediately like, get out of the way. <laughs> okay, you go and try. Uh, nice, 21. All righty. Check for a false bottom. <laughs> okay, first thing, you notice a, a, a couple of interesting things. You notice a small vial of purple liquid that is uh, just- Antidote? Sitting. Does it say antidote on the side? There, there, is, there is no marking on it. Um, I drink it. Uh, uh, you, you do find 45 platinum pieces, oh. 12 gold and 15 silver in a small pouch. I slide a hand. Make a slide a hand check. Wait. Don't worry about it. <laughs> 17 so plus nine. Make a perception check. Okay. Oh. He's poisoned. Hmm? He's poisoned. He's poisoned so he doesn't get it. That's right, you have disadvantage uh, on that. Disadvantage. On that. Don't oh, worry about oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, plus nine, so uh, nah, 22. All right. Okay. And also, just, uh, we move forward, it's fine. All right, so 22. <laughs> no, and what you what were you going to say? <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah, we... Technically would have disadvantage on the investigation check earlier, but it's fine. We'll oh, move ahead. Right. You've, had a, you've had a bad enough minute, it's fine. <laughs> Dagny, would you roll for perception? <laughs> 20. Nice. Coin is yours unseen. Ooh. Thank you. Um, beyond Sorry, that. I'll split it with you later. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Highly unlikely. I can only do what I can do. Yeah. No worries. Beyond that, uh, you notice what are a number of different outfits of varying formality, 
um, looking at them as you kind of pull them out, they're fitted for a female, and you get the sense this is probably the room that Mona is staying in. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, in reaching through, you do find what looks to be a hidden pocket on the inside of this trunk, where the interior kind of velvet material is supposed to cover it. Your fingers find the bottom bit and pull it up, and there's a slight rip sound. And on the inside, there's a hidden pouch where it appears to be a folded piece of paper. Oh, I... You pull it out and read it, and what appears to be hastily written notes across this. Um, and you pull it apart, and there's actually two letters. One is a partially written letter to what is a Lord Magister of Suzale that speaks of evidence against Adinas and his dealings. Okay. The other note is a long list of names and orders. You can make a history check if you'd like. Um, 11. These names mean nothing to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bunch of names. It's not my jam. Can no. we give it a look-see? Yeah, I hand it to her. Okay, make a history check, Dagny. Don't fuck me, Gil. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think I know. I don't think. Oh, I don't. They don't. I don't know them. She can't read. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All right. So you have a, a list of names uh, and, we'll and orders. We'll pocket them. Okay, you pocket them. And what appears to be that that letter to a Lord Magister that is it is almost written like uh, the actual specific text would be along the lines of, "I found what I think is enough. His business is more dire than we expected." I'll continue collecting, mm. and it's... So I'll say, I think Mona's on our side, just so everyone knows. I think Mo when you kill, don't kill Mona. Mm. Are you telling us this? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is okay. I think. I'm no. sorry, I can't quite <laughs> hear what you said. <laughs> Wait, why are you making that noise with your mouth? <laughs> um, let's go back. Let's okay, go back. let's go back. Anything else in the room? Uh, go ahead and make an investigation check as you can scan through and start checking areas and corners. Oh, oh for 20. Ah! <laughs> All righty. Uh, glancing through the room, uh, you find some linens that are dusty and well washed. Uh, you find what looks to be an old pocket watch that may have been discarded from a previous tenant. I'm going to take it. All righty. Uh, and that's it. It's, it's a pretty bare chamber, and this estate is used to house guests of Waterdeep when they're in from out of town. Uh, so you sense the things you found may have been just left behind from previous guests, but you've pretty much found what seems to be the important points to this chamber. Guys, we found some letters and a really sweet pocket watch. I'm going to keep it for myself. All right. That's all we found. We, we can't stall any longer. It okay, we're take coming this to wash hands. <laughs> all right, so you guys head back. The rest of you are in the chamber talking with him as he's taking bites of the food and kind of like, no, this is actually not that bad. <laughs> it is. <laughs> no, it's great. It's delicious. <laughs> I got a few kinks to work out, but uh, uh, Mona, keep taking notes, please. And starts like whispering over to her various things that kind of mm -hmm. under the breath. Mona keeps taking notes rapidly in that point. What are you guys doing? Um, I, I'm uh, very curious about um, your second here, Mona. Uh, how did you two meet? Oh, uh, it's a simple story. Mona was looking for work and uh, had proven to be rapid at uh, transcribing words being spoken and is very good at uh, keeping company secrets. Ah. So uh, it has worked well for about two years at this point and uh, last anything really terrible happens, it has been a good arrangement. Mona just nods. Mm. Mm. Dinner gets like strangely <laughs> awkward at this point as you're all just kind of staring at each other over the table. So, um, are you all attending this Lord's Ball tomorrow? Uh, we, we are, yes. I have been practicing my dance moves yes. for um, the make a past few check. weeks. <laughs> <laughs> we come back in. 13? <laughs> I will say I have never seen a Minotaur mm. dance. Yes, not. Would you be happy to perhaps uh, give us a display of what you have been working on, my friend Toro? <laughs> okay, uh, I stand up. I put my hand down. <clears throat> yes. Okay. Yes. I would like you both to make a performance. <laughs> a performance check, please. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> What's interesting is Jamila takes the lead. 
<laughs> and what was yep. what was originally kind of that awkward first scene from Dirty Dancing <laughs> becomes the amazing second later scenes of Dirty Dancing. Um, but your baby. Uh, <laughs> You've never seen a grown woman dip a minotaur with such grace. <laughs> um, as, as we're dancing around, I, I steer us a little bit over towards, towards Mona. <clears throat> and uh, as, I, as I dip Toro very gracefully, I, I catch her eye and I say, um, I will be attending the ball. I need a new dress. You look about my size. Could I borrow one, please? <laughs> <laughs> Make a charisma check to see if you can slyly get across your subtle context. All right. Is Mona six eight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Crit. Nice. Yeah. Oh. Legit. Yeah. For even the short time you've spent here in Waterdeep, the kind of like somewhat you know, dank, uh, small, sinister bars you spent time in, you've learned a little bit of double talk, and you've been able to kind of slide this underneath. Mona's eyes go wide for a second, darts back to her master, back to you, and goes, actually, I, I might be able to. I brought a few extras. Nice. Perhaps we could look into this in a moment. Fantastic. I twirl Toro back to his seat. <laughs> Toro has no idea what's happened. <laughs> Yet... There's something freeing about being manhandled in a way you've never been manhandled before. And in a moment, you feel safe <laughs> and protected. I'm going to start hitting dice rolls at some point to see. I just want you to be prepared. When it counts. Everybody have fun while it lasts. <laughs> At this point, on the other side, the doors open and you watch as Dagny and Beetle walk in just as you watch the ending flourish of this display, putting a Toro back into his seat. Amazing. <laughs> that bathroom. <laughs> Except for Jamila. Jamila puts Toro in the corner. Yeah. Nobody puts Toro in the corner. <laughs> that was incredible. I, I'm not going to lie. I thought you were lying. But, um, wow, if, if this is what Waterdeep's great balls have to display, I am so excited for tomorrow night. <laughs> Get ready. Oh, fantastic. Uh, I, you, uh, the food has been prepared. I'm sorry you missed it. It might not be as warm as you hope, but please uh, sit and enjoy. Nice. You were gone for quite some time. Did you have a difficult time discovering the bathroom? Yeah. Beautiful house. I had Beautiful no idea house. where it was. bathroom was great, but, it, uh, you know, it was... We followed the away. construct. That was a mistake. Yeah, we got stuck behind him, and I'd like you both to make a deception check. Ah. <laughs> Curses. Crit. Oh. Uh, Seventeen. All right. You watch as his eyes tense as you approach and begin to give your tail, but as you do, he relaxes in his seat. Very well. Very well. Um, <clears throat> well, please dig in, as they would say here in Waterdeep. Yes, I believe really? that is an actual old adage here on the. Amazing. Dig, least, dig in. Yes, classic Sword Coast uh, uh, <laughs> All the historical time. Uh, family speak. <laughs> uh, Jamila writes that down in a little notebook. <laughs> That won't come back Don't to drink wine, <laughs> having the poison still resonating in my in my. You look mouth. a bit puffy, yeah. yeah, yeah you're you're yeah. like. <laughs> I'll drink a lot of wine. <laughs> All right, it is strong wine, and it is delicious, and is very rich. This is probably some of the best wine you've ever had. Amazing, I love it. All right, uh, at which point uh, the the steps begin to return, and you watch as the golem begins to, to arrive just, just as you're getting ready to, to leave to check up on it. Yeah. Um, it arrives with what appears to be a small uh, set of pastries. The, uh, the, the, the master, Adinas, goes, <clears throat> Draza! <laughs> the glyphs flare up once more. Please serve the desserts. Goes around and begins to set individual platters of various treats. Goes back to the chamber. Draza, to the kitchen, please. The, the glyphs flare up again exits the chamber. If you wish to inspect to see if perhaps you can uh, uh, improve my friend here, uh, now would be the time. I would love to. What is this word that, is it a command word that you're saying to him? To uh, for specific constructs, uh, we want to have a command word that is appropriate to making sure that they follow your instructions. Got it, okay. Um, yeah, I would love to. Of I would course. love to give him a thorough inspection. Uh, by all means, go ahead. I will tell you, uh, however, as your inquiry is, um, these command words are change and are specifically engineered per construct, so it will not work on other such uh, 
creatures, if that's what you were thinking. <laughs> I wouldn't dream of it. Gosh, no. Very good. As she writes, she like scribbles something out in her, her cartographer's notes. She's like, well, that's not going to do it then. <laughs> um, so Draza? Is uh, well, that, that is not for you to worry about. Um, it is keyed into my uh, vocal timbre. Oh, very fascinating. Um, so yeah, I will go inspect this, this golem. Very well. Yeah. So, ah, the both of you, please, uh, tell me how you managed to, uh, to find yourselves under the employ of such a Oh, that's woman. so funny. I was about to ask you the same thing. Well, Tomorrow, I'm... you're going to the ball, no? Perhaps. That Raven's... Is the reason for being here, yes. Raven's yeah. guard. Hmm. You were invited, were you? I was. I, I, it is a very esteemed uh, uh, offering to be brought to us over in Cormier. I was very happy to be chosen by the rest of our uh, guild, and I am very happy to be here to represent. Amazing. Did you bring a gift to bestow? Uh, I do perhaps have a few gifts. Uh, I was hoping to give it personally to Vashra, so when I do see her, uh, perhaps during or after the ball, I will be happy to present to her. If you wish to tease when you see her that there is a gift coming, <laughs> I would greatly appreciate that. You know, I definitely just... will. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Speaking of which, what are Vajra's interests, if I might ask? Uh, what does she do on her spare time? Do we know? <laughs> you have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what it, okay, oh. but what does, all right, what does she hate? Like, what is, what is the, th the thing that she must hate, right? She's a fancy lady. Does, <laughs> does she like um, fishing with her bare hands? <laughs> no. Is this telepathy? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. This is yeah, the new yeah, symbol yeah, yeah. for telepathy. Yeah, that's, oh, that's good. This is mine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just picking that up. <laughs> yeah. 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 We're not talking. This is guard, in case you are one. I don't know how it sounds to you if my regular voice is in your head or if it is just flat. No, it's just your regular voice. <laughs> okay, well, this is me. My yeah. reply to this mess. <laughs> Everyone goes blank at the table. <laughs> um, <laughs> Eating food. Uh, yeah. I'm just. I, I just Dad. hold. I'm holding my wine glass up to my mouth when I do that. <laughs> she does love a, a love a good wine. Oh. She loves a good wine. That is good to know. I yeah. we have plenty of fantastic wines collected from all over Ferron. I will be happy to present that. That can be done. Do you happen to know if um, is she currently seeking a suitor of any kind? Does she take companions in her spare time, perhaps? Oh, she has a she has a big old boyfriend. <laughs> See big this one. guy? Nothing. Mm. <laughs> really? Oh yeah, they're they are so serious, mm -hmm. and it's I mean you've seen them together. Yeah. Just love. Yes, yeah, I forgot about that guy. But you might have a chance. <laughs> Make a deception check oh, if you don't mind, Rosie. Twenty. Not natural twenty. Yeah. yeah. You watch as his expression goes somewhat browbeaten. <laughs> <laughs> the face kind of hangs from it. I see. Um, is that her type? <laughs> is, that why, <laughs> is that why you're here? You think you are the <laughs> No, I'm just curious. Just professional curiosity. <laughs> so why are you laughing? It's so funny. <laughs> you. <laughs> You, your laughing stops. You're still moving, but no sounds coming out. Whoa. I, in my mind, I'll say this dude is a problem. Oh. <laughs> Duh, in my mind. Um, I say, uh, you are quite right, sir. That was very disrespectful. We will reprimand him. What are you doing? I say, why are you doing that? Just go along with it. Attack! Military attack! <laughs> Don't you see he's say, cast? Um, <clears throat> uh, if you would like, uh, Mona and I could retire and find this dress. I'll take him with me out of your sight. No, I wish to see him reprimanded now before me. Um, oh. I, I slap him across the face. I, I, no! I 100% dodge that. That is not happening. Make an attack roll. This is what, bullshit. What, what's your armor this class? This is going wrong. What's your armor class? This is going wrong. <laughs> what's your armor uh, class, Beetle? What? This, I don't... Uh, Beetle, what's your armor class? 14. <laughs> All right, roll, roll for an attack. Now, it's on an arm. What Correct. do I do? Is it like... Or just roll d20, add your strength modifier. My strength modifier. And, you, and, and your proficiency bonus, because you are yeah. proficient yeah. in arm strength. All right, so that is a 13. Yes. 13. Can I grab it? Sure. You catch it in the middle of the air. Yeah. Okay. And I'll just stare at you, and I'll put I'll put your hand I'll put my hand down. Oh my God. I put it down and, and I, I say. I, 
I'm and listening. I say, oh, well, you can't, you can't say anything. No, but I'm, I'm listening. You are listening. Yeah. Um, I give another little. <laughs> <laughs> I think he can see you. <laughs> Beetle. Smooth. Beetle. My Let her slap the shit out of you. <laughs> you ding dong. <laughs> this is the worst group I've ever traveled with. <laughs> so I will, I will, um, I will take a drink and I will try, I will bow to him to say, as if to say, I'm sorry. He flicks his hand and you kind of give this slight uh, gravelly uh, breathe and your voice is uh, 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 um, I apologize. I thought you were making a joke. <laughs> I accept because I wish to be gracious to the proxies of your employer, but please be respectful with your future uh, conversation. Mm. You wish to find a dress, go yeah, for it. Thank you. Please do uh, see if you can do something about this uh, chef. Uh, yeah, oh, what was your name once more? I'm sorry. Uh, Dagny. Dagny in Toro. Um, so, you are skilled at dancing. What is your skill? Uh, I, I make things. You make? Tinker. Uh, a tinker? Interesting. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty good builder of things of sorts. Show me what you have built, if you have the capability. Uh, yeah. Um, Take my little mechanical mouse, put it on the table. Just meet this little guy. Just it kind of curves around and kind of does it. Uh, impressive. Uh, uh. Also, well, I have some other things, but I don't know if I feel comfortable showing them to you. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I think you know exactly <laughs> what she means. <laughs> right? <laughs> Wait, what do you think I mean? I am so very confused by this scenario. Uh, look, I am curious to see what perhaps you can work on, but if it's not something you have to present, that is fine. We will do about other business. I mean, I, I, I build lots of things. And do you have a workshop in the town? Yeah. Hmm. Before I leave, I would like to pay a visit, perhaps, and see what talent you have. If you have quite a bit of talent, perhaps I can offer you a better proposition than the black staff can. It is always good to find fresh talent. I will accept that offer. Come see my shop. Very see well. See what I can do. Before the night is out, we will swap information of where you are staying, and we will make this so. Thank you. Okay. Mona, go aid this woman to find the proper dress. Sure. Something that can show uh, an equal amount of grace <coughs> and the splendor of which she has done in spinning around my large friend here. Mm. Um, as, as Mona, uh, Jamila, and Rosie leave the chamber, uh, leaving uh, Dagny, Beetle, and Toro here at the table, uh, you watch as the eyes of uh, Adinas come back to Toro. Minotaurs, they are not very common here in Waterdeep. No. What draws you to this place so far from your home? Well, I was working as a bodyguard in the town of Thyatus. It was good coin. But the person who ran the club that I was protecting disappeared. I followed his track to this town. I am looking for him. And I am also looking for another space to open another club. I figured perhaps you could help me find out. This is not a business I have ventured into, but partnerships are possible. As you guys are having this conversation, what are you doing in the hallway? Okay. Um, I, I take Mona um, by the hand. Um, uh, yes. <laughs> I say, um, uh, we, we, are, um, we are friends. Good, I'm glad to know that. Um, <clears throat> we have reason to believe that uh, we might be able to help you. This way. And uh, Mona heads over to uh, the doorway. Are you coming with Rosie? All right. The two of you kind of get pulled over to the, the left chamber just outside in the hallway. She pulls a key out and goes to put it in with the door. <laughs> Opens already. Oh, sorry. That was probably our friends. <laughs> <clears throat> Step inside, please. <laughs> Closes the door. You guys are inside the chamber. 
So, you say friends. What is your business here? We were retained by the Vajra to get information about your master. Oh. Very well. Well, you're um, certainly making an interesting evening for him. <laughs> uh, there has to be something in his room. I haven't been able to go in there myself. He keeps the key on his person. If there's mm -hmm. any way we could get the key off of him or find a way to open his room, <coughs> that might be some sort of path to finding information that could, in the right hands, absolve myself and put him, rightfully so, behind some sort of chains. Which is his room? About 10 feet down on the opposite side of the hallway. Mm. <clears throat> we communicate this? To upstairs. Yeah, yeah to that, you guys. Yeah. That, okay. that yeah. uh, Mona knows who we are and that uh, uh, we need to find a way into his room. Mm. But there mm. may be information in there. Okay. Toro. Yeah. Toro, I think he likes you. The key is on his person. Uh, how seductive can you be mm. right now? <laughs> get me out of the room before that happens. <laughs> <laughs> I can get in the door. We don't need the key, but we do need a distraction. I do need, I do need to see that seduction I, scene, though. I don't need to see <laughs> the seduction. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, seduce. I, uh, I grabbed the bottle of wine. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. And I pour more wine into my goblet and into his, and I say, I will meet you under the table. <laughs> This is an old saying from where I come from. Let's see what you are made of, my friend. Make a persuasion check. Okay. Thirteen. Thirteen. Gives like a, a, a keen eye towards you and grasps his goblet. And... Mm -hmm. Very well. I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> I have a fascination with your kind, so uh, let us drink to that. Yes. <laughs> Pistare. Oh, you did that. <laughs> Pistare. 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 I throw the goblet Ta into the fireplace. <laughs> oh, and I put my arm down. <laughs> I, uh, it's... Come. If I may, might I give myself a chance with my personal skill set? Be my guest. Takes a moment, closes his eyes, and begins to carve some sort of a, a sign in the air. He watches this faint trace of blue, kind of follows his fingertips. And as soon as he finishes pressing his palm into it, it flashes, and you watch his physical body <laughs> bulk up ever so slightly. He opens his eyes. Now. Let us try this, <laughs> my Minotaur friend. <laughs> Make a strength check. Okay. <laughs> this is so creepy. <laughs> Natural 20. <laughs> there we go. We started. We started. <laughs> you not seen in the fly when they're in the bar? <laughs> no. <laughs> There's a moment where he's like, it's nothing to you. You're just kind of letting him sit there for a minute. Boom! Onto the table and knocks his goblet over, spilling wine all over the carpet and all over the side of the table. His wrist kind of poof, pops into the socket. You watch as his hand just kind of limply is laying in there at the edge of his wrist. Oh, oh, I can fix it. Hit this pocket. Fix it. Hit this pocket. I'll come to him. Why do I have oh, my friend? <laughs> I'm, yes. I, um, a slide of hand. I'll try to get that Go damn key. Uh, I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to distract, and I'm gonna. Come on. I'm All gonna. Right. I'm no, gonna cast uh, that. Plus nine, so it's sixteen. Sixteen. All right. Well, we're in poison. Oh, but yeah, roll yeah, oh, no. no poison. <laughs> my mind, I'm calling you all kinds of names. <laughs> you can roll higher than that. You got this. 14. That's right. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Great. So 16. That's enough. As he's doubled over, not paying attention to the searing pain in his, in his wrist, going, oh, what? This is, I did not sign up for this. 
Uh, you rifle through his robe and quickly pull out what looks to be uh, two small keys. One's, one's very tiny, one's a little bit wider. They're both made of some sort of a brass material and you quickly pocket it unseen. Amazing. Oh, my friend, my friend, what? And I, I headbutt him. Oh. Like I, I, I bull charge him into like the Fire. fireplace. By, like, but by accident. <laughs> I'm a friend, my okay. friend. Go ahead and roll for a full okay. charge attack. Okay. That's a, uh, and what is it? That's just like an, like an attack? Yep, just uh, add your efficiency modifier and your strength modifier. That's good. That's 18. That'll hit. Oh. <laughs> so, so uh, you, you, you smack into him and he gets thrown off the chair, kind of falls back. He lands his shoulders into the fireplace, which thing they catch you. He was like, ha, 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 ha! Start patting it out with the other I'll, I'll try to help him. I'll try to, what are you doing? Jackie, are you, are you doing helping him? I'm so clumsy. Give, give, me, give me your arm. He's, you know, he, he's just big. Here, I, I'm going to cast Cure Wounds. Okay. So go ahead and roll for Cure Wounds on him. I'll get you water, and I'll bolt out. Okay, he's not even paying attention to you. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm going to take this opportunity. All right, now. as you Sorry. bolt out, you watch as the door open, and, and very quietly, Jamila, Mona, and uh, uh, Rosie come out into the hallway to catch you right there in the center. You guys hear this loud commotion and screaming coming from the dining How's room. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Ten, ten. <laughs> His wrist resets, and he's, oh, oh, oh. I think you should have done such a good job. Just a, just a bit of fun. I am both extremely angry and yet very impressed. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> he writes his goblet and begins to pour more wine into it. <laughs> now you guys in the hallway, yeah. what are you doing? Uh, come, uh, do you have the key? Yeah, I do. So I, I have the key. Um, I'll go up and I'll check the door for traps. Is this door here? Up on the right, yeah? Okay, yeah, go ahead and make an investigation check. Uh, it's not a good check. <laughs> Looks fine. So I'm going to open that door with the, uh, I have two keys. Yeah, you have the, the shorter have, one and the longer one. Do I have a percent, can I do a percent, I'll take the longer one because I need the shorter ones for something inside. All right, longer I'll one. The, so I'll open it. Slips in, ah, it opens up, no oh, problem. Oh, nice. So Ooh. I go inside, I close the door. Are you, go, What's in there? What's in the room? So, yes, I, I, we're in there so we're in the room. So we're in the room. All right. Speaking with Mona. Okay. As you enter this chamber, you're stepping in. Uh, immediately, the smell of incense hits your nose. There's a, a round mattress that marks the far end of the room. There's uh, sheets of, of, of deep red and silk, um, but it's all covered in dust, unused. Hmm. Um, That's you, weird. you can see what looks to be a, a, a cushion piled uh, canopy uh, over, over the bed there. Um, there's red curtains that dominate the center of the room around this canopy. There's a heavy desk that occupies the far left corner beneath the window, while a large dark wood dresser marks the far right window. The air, the air uh, is a little musty and stale once you get past that initial like burst of incense. Hmm. Is there tracks? You said there's dust all over the place. Yeah. Are there tracks on the floor? Make an investigation check. 19 rolled. There are. Um, and it's pretty easy to see here. This isn't so much a survival wilderness tracking skill. This is literally in a chamber. Mm -hmm. So with the investigation check, you follow them. They go straight to the dresser. Great. I'll use the small. I'll check it over for traps. Do you know anything? Oh, Mona's here. Um, yeah, M Mona's like. Quick. Okay, good. I'll check it over for traps real quick. I rolled an 18. Not trapped, actually. Great. I'll open Slide. it. Okay. You go, it opens up. Inside, you can see what looks to be a number of, of long coats robes, vests, it's just a, it's a closet of clothing. Oh, where am I looking for? I, I don't know, I haven't been inside this chamber. I'm not allowed in this. Okay, investigation. All right. 20. 20, you push past and uh, through in the back of the cupboard you see what looks to be a mirror of some kind. Uh, it's just a, a mirror reflecting you, it has kind of a simple brass uh, you know, uh, surrounding mat to it, but the, it's Great. just a mirror. I'll grab a dagger, turn away from the side and go behind it. Okay, you go behind the... Yeah, I just, I'll move to the side in case something's behind that okay. mirror and so pop it open. Pop it. The, yeah, yeah. No, then it's a mirror. It. Yep. It's magical. I'll look into the mirror. Anything there? Your reflection, staring back at you. How good looking is it? Not right now. It's poison <laughs> through your veins. <laughs> um, there's got to be... I will say at this point, the poison's kind of worn off. You guys have spent some time at the dinner party. It'll make it a little yeah. easier. Okay, good. Um, I'm, not, I'm not a very magical person, but um, maybe some kind of like... Uh, do is there I don't can you can you do me, no. whatever the in-game version of Rosie's saying? Can you do an Arcana check on the spear? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, uh, do you think there's a? Uh, could you send? Oh uh, look! Okay. Is it feeling magical to me? <laughs> <laughs> Make an Arcana check. <laughs> Good idea. Woo! I'm hot. Um, 19, uh, 21. Uh, glancing over, you can see around the faint edges of where the mirror matches the kind of uh, bronze exterior of it. Uh, there is a very very. Faint blue glow, and you sense this is an actual magically enchanted mirror of some kind. 
Amazing. It's about three foot by two feet. Uh, I'll reach in. Pink. It hits. Ouch. It hits glass. Okay. Uh, it's not I say, I stand in front of him and I say, Draza. <laughs> the glass oh! suddenly shifts. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even write that down. And we would have been there all night. <laughs> I eat it. You immediately see a chamber on the opposite side of the room. Uh, it's small, it's compact. You can see a much nicer bed in there that's kind of like dark green Sorry, uh, cloth. You can see what looks to be a, a roller desk of some kind that is currently closed. There's a, a small iron statue of a minotaur, about three feet tall, that's sitting on a pedestal. The, uh, the carpet of the floor itself is a, a series of designs that are like bending and shifting at angles, like this massive series of strange designs that are tangling, ending, and, and splitting off in a different direction. I'll cast Detect Magic. Do you tell me this? Yeah, Toro, don't come down here. Are you between the chamber? <laughs> um, I'll cast before I go in the chamber. Okay, the detect. mirror is very magical. Uh, <laughs> can I cast it past that? I mean, do if I you, see? If you enter into it, and then yes. you'll be able to see. All now right. I do that. So you peek through. Um, yes, looking in the chamber, you can see the bed has a very faint sense of magic to it. You feel and sense some magical aspects of the inside of that roller desk. The, uh, the Minotaur statue has some magic essence to it. Um, and the carpet itself is a very faint magical essence. Toro, he's in a Minotaur. Get out of there. <laughs> um, no, no, I keep, no, have to talking. use the keep bathroom. I have a very <laughs> small bladder. I will be right back. Make a deception check. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody cheated. I have a big bladder. You're right. This is deception. <laughs> Ooh, well, looks like somebody else is hot, my friend. <laughs> nice. It's about that time. What you say? Uh, 21. 21? <laughs> yes. All right. I understand that you have to use the restroom. I am not going to stay here at my dinner party by myself. No, I'm here. I'm here. I, what? Uh, where? <laughs> Yes. Uh, where are you? Where are you from here? <laughs> like, were you? Were you? Were you born here? D Dagny was it? Yes. Come with Toro and myself as we escort him to the restroom mm -hmm. and go to try and catch up with the rest of your friends. I feel. I do not want people to be lost in this estate. Get up. Stands up from the chair and just kind of waits for you to exit to find the restroom. I. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden. I don't have to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I will just warm myself by the fire. Yeah, no, I please, I would hate for you to be uncomfortable mm. at my dinner table. You're being very snarky with your tone of voice with me. <laughs> Is there a reason for this? No, I just... Where are your friends? Oh, my friends? They went to find some kind of dress. Yeah, you're getting your For a six foot eight woman. <laughs> Very well. Wait here. I will go make sure that they're all right. And he stands I up and starts leaving the chamber. Uh, we'll come with you because the bathroom is this way, and now my hands are very warm. <laughs> <laughs> they are vile. <laughs> He's coming this way. Dagny. Get ready. Dagny, care to uh, join us? <laughs> Well, I just, I thought we were all gonna sit here and have like a really nice meal. So did I, but apparently people have other things to do. <laughs> I'm not angry, just disappointed. <laughs> well, uh, where are, you go where are you going? Come with us and find out. We're gonna look for your friends. And continues to walk into the hallway. While this is happening. I move in yeah. behind him. Okay. I'm While this is happening, him. you guys are there. He sent, he told us, right? He's coming this way. We tried to stop him, but. Go try on a dress. Sorry, try on a dress. dress. All right, so. I'm going to so, go talk to the golem, too. Where's my thing? Okay, so you're going back to talk to the golem? Yeah, so what I want to do, I think, when we get that message from Toro, yeah. is hop out of this chamber and get out in the hallway and be like, I just can't. I, I'm ready to intercept. Okay. Got gotcha. Talk about this golem. Okay, got it. So as, as Rosie makes her way into the hallway to try to hit him off at the pass, uh, with Toro and Dagnick in their way, you guys are right by the dresser right uh -huh. now with Mona. Uh -huh. are, have you entered the chamber or are you staying? Um, Mo Mona, go dis go, you guys go try on something. I will jump into the thing. Yes, I'll go in. Very well. All right, um, come with me to the chamber real fast. I'll, I'll pull out a dress. So grabs Jamila, the two of you go off, head off in the Mona's room, uh, passing past Rosie, and she begins to pull. She goes, looks inside and sees the trunk open and goes like, all oh, right. <laughs> grabs one of the dresses and hands it to you real fast. Cool. Pretty small. <laughs> All right, well, this is happening, uh, Beetle, as you enter the chamber, yeah. you're there, you can see there's a roller desk, there's the, the statue, you see the bed, and there's uh, the, the carpet there. What do you do? So the carpet, it, 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 it covers the entire floor. Can I avoid the carpet? Uh, the carpet covers the entire floor. Awesome. 
I have a real bad feeling about the floor. <laughs> um, wall to wall. I will. Um, I'll t can, is there any? Is it like wood paneled? Can I try to crawl, crap, crawl around? You do see as you look up. It looks to be an iron circle chandelier. Amazing. With, with I'll take that. Of, all right. <laughs> go make an acrobatics check to go ahead and, and, and grab onto it in the air as you try and make. One a of my forward. special feats is a plus nine. Uh, oh. oh. No. I have one more luck roll, um, uh, right? I had one. Yeah. I take it. I couldn't do two because that guy said I couldn't. <laughs> right? And you then do have one more. I have one more because okay. the yeah, natural one is a good job. <laughs> a good job. <laughs> Plus nine, eighteen. Much better than a one. Yes. <laughs> As you leap up, grabbing onto the side, you hang in the air and kind of swing back and forth in the chandelier. You can now look. You have. You can, if you wanted to, you can try and push off and leap either onto the bed or onto the desk. Uh, I'll take the desk. All right. As you leap off and land onto the desk, uh, part of the wood kind of breaks in a bit, but the roller desk is probably still partially functional to pull open if you want. I'll pull it open. <laughs> away from me, away from me. So I'm on top of it. Right, you're having to pull it up and look down. All right, yeah. so there at the desk, uh, you see what looks to be a, a, a series of blank papers. There's things for writing. Uh, you see a number of, of strange books that upon just glancing through will have a written language that you cannot understand. Sure enough. Uh, what languages do you know, actually? Mm, I, mm. Not a lot. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Dwarf and uh, I don't have it. Pick one. Um, Elvish. All right. You do not know this language. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> but the, but these tomes, but the language itself, the, the script seems very uh, jagged and and ancient in its own right. Um, you do find a leather binder that looks to be a journal of some kind that is currently kind of partially open. Okay. Uh, and a note has been partially written and, and left open in that space, uh, and there are a number of other books that are currently locked on the side. Okay, I'll leave those be. Um, I'll grab the journal. Okay. And I'm trying to incriminate him. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna stay with the journal, but I think he's gonna miss the journal. Mm -hmm. Can I? <sighs> well, as, as you look in, in the journal, yeah. uh, it's, the page is open to, it has uh, notes, uh, it seems to be written, uh, saying, whispers say the stone lies within the city, right under their ignorant noses. What we could accomplish with such a hoard of funding our endeavors. Ask around while at the ball, see whose lips are loose. And then as you kind of turn the page back, you see what looks to be a, uh, uh, another letter that's kind of folded into the paper, uh -huh. saying Sarun would be pleased with your progress. Sarun? S-A-R-U-U-N would be pleased with your progress and is signed with an O. Great, with an O. Correct. You also find lying next to it what looks to be a wax seal. Okay. Uh, that looking at the shape of it, it looks to be a, a bull's head with seven pillars behind it. Okay. I want to look for treasure and gold, but I feel like that's a mistake. Well, are you, are you taking anything from the desk? Or are you leaving it there? No, I'm going to leave. I, I now see it. Now I know his intention. I'm going to leave it there. Okay, so you're leaving the journal there. I am. I don't want to betray our sort of what we've discovered. Okay, good right? to know. All right, so what are you doing now on the desk? I'm going to go, is that a mistake? <laughs> People. You broke the desk. I don't know. He's going to know. Do you want to take a poll? <laughs> yeah, what do you think I should do? <laughs> do I take the diary or do I leave the diary? Great, Make thanks, guys. Make the bad choice. Make the bad You gotta take it. Yeah. All right, I'll take the diary. And I'll also look around. Now, now I want the Minotaur. How big is it? Uh, well, as you grab the diary and put it on your shoulder and turn the Minotaur, you watch as his eyes <laughs> flash oh. red. The head. I didn't want the diary. I didn't want the diary. Yeah. And this. Damn it. This, this miniature three foot kind of no. uh, uh, a tiny minotaur just suddenly <laughs> flares out this kind of green smoke from its nose and begins to bolt in your direction off of its pillar. What are you doing? I'm going to get out. I'm going to get out. All right. Are you, are you trying to get back to the, uh, are you just going to run across the carpet or are you going to jump forward? No, the, I'm going to go up because I think the minotaur, I, I'm going to try to do the same way. Acrobatics check. Uh, plus nine. Damn it. Um, so that's uh, 13. 13, okay, you managed to just catch it. Uh -huh. ah, you're hanging there. Uh, the tiny golem beneath kind of <laughs> releases from its nose this heavy, angry puff of what I'll looks say to the be same word. a green smoke. What was the word? I need, you to, I need you to make a constitution Ed. saving throw. <laughs> oh, I asked him, what's the, what's the construct there? Drasa, Drasa. Drasa, I said Drasa. 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 Doesn't make any oh. difference on this one. Damn it. Do I make a constitution saving throw? 
Two plus three is five. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm sorry, two plus two is four. You suffer, <laughs> you suffer 28 points of poison damage. Oh. Okay. That's not a problem. As it burns across your body and flesh, you Whoa. see the edges of it begin to peel back, the, the, the poison itself. Uh, just tearing into the outer layer of your skin and you kind of scream out in pain before you make one final leap for the mirror. Making your way through, make an acrobatics check. I, I don't know why I started rolling, you're just gonna let no, me go, go for through. It. Go for it. Nine, so Nine. No, 18. So you manage to make it, but you tumble out loudly poof, through and onto the ground. Uh, at this point, you guys in the hallway, you watch as, uh, <laughs> as uh, Adinas turns the corner with uh, Toro and Dagny. Interesting. So, we found one of your compatriots, where are the rest? At which point, the door on the side, uh, Mona grabs you out into the hallway with you partially in a dress, like, uh, we're just getting uh, this uh, wonderful woman into a dress. Oh, that looks so nice. <laughs> you hear this heavy noise. <laughs> and inside, <laughs> Tina's chamber goes, what was that? Uh, uh, You've landed on the other side, you're inside the bedroom now. Cast invisibility. Cast invisibility, all right. You cast invisibility. <laughs> Out the out the, the mirror, the tiny iron minotaur <laughs> runs out in your direction, trying to give chase. It's going to go ahead and attempt to attack you three times. However, you are invisible, so has disadvantage on each of these strikes. That's going to be a 13 to hit. What's your armor class? 14. <laughs> so the first slam attack misses you. The next one, uh, that's going to be a 19 to hit. That hits. That hits. All right. As you manage to dodge the first one, unfortunately, as you shift back, your foot skids across the dust, kind of revealing your position. The red eyes flare. It lunges with its other, oh, it's gonna be 18 points of bludgeoning damage. Oh, let me count real quick. Are you rolling 62. <laughs> yes. Okay, yeah. I'm rolling two dice at once, so. Fancy. Uh -huh. Wow. Um, Keeps it going. I don't know. I, uh, uh, I get, I'm so nervous I can't count. Um, uh, okay, okay, two, three, four. I think it's 60. I drop. You drop. I drop. All right, and it's gonna go ahead and try and gore you with the torrents. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be at 20, yeah, all right. So, you you lose a death saving throw. Yeah, sorry. As you're unconscious, and the bull tears into you with the torrents. <laughs> Do you want to see the the rules for death saves? They're right there. <laughs> it did so, not go how I wanted to. <laughs> so, as Beetle is now on the ground bleeding out, this Iron Minotaur, <clears throat> the door slightly ajar to that side, you watch as Adinus' head turns and looks to the back of the rest of you. What are you doing in my chamber? and he begins to rush towards the room to push the door open. Looking inside, you guys kind of look past his shoulders and you can see on the ground the unconscious beetle bleeding out as this tiny minotaur construct begins to charge towards Adinas, who steps out of the way and it heads into the hallway, looking up at the rest of you. Yep. Wow. Roll initiative. Made it yeah. <laughs> Violence! <laughs> <laughs> wow, him and the minotaur rolled really low. All righty. Sorry. I got you. So, uh, 25 to 20, anybody? 20. Oh. oh, nice. Rosie's up top. All right, 20 to 15. Jamila. Jamila. 16. 15, you said? Or is 16. 16. Both of you guys. 16. Mm -hmm. All right. Jamila wow. and Toro. All righty. Yeah. 15 to, to 10? Yeah. 12. <laughs> 12 for Dagny. I'm dead. Oh, that's right. Beetle? Uh, do you want me to roll for my death? Well, we have to roll to see when seven. you would. Seven. Seven. <laughs> All right. That's good, though. It'll be late. You don't have a death. Wait, you don't have a. I don't know how I feel about oh, full oh, on bull. Yeah, ten. ten. All righty. So, top of the round. Rosie, your quick yeah, reflexes put you in a position where as Adinus turns around and begins to warp his hands into what seems to be a trailing magical incantation, what are you doing? Uh, so, Adinus is now also attacking us? Adinus has turned with a minotaur by his side, seeing what has transpired, and looks like he's ready to defend himself magically. Okay. Um, Rosie's gonna give the monk sauce. She's going to um, strike Adinus, um, attempt to stun him with stunning strike. And then uh, if that doesn't work, I don't think she's gonna tr try to kill him, but she could. Um, <laughs> the, the, rest, the rest of those hits will go toward trying to disable this minotaur. All righty, so go ahead and go for the first strike against Adinus. Okay. 
Uh, 24. That'll hit. Go ahead and roll damage on that one. <laughs> nice. And nice. key point for stunning strike. Yes. And he has to do a constitution save, yes, I think, he does. right? That'll be eight points of damage on him. Eight points of damage already. Yeah. And the, and as you whack, slam with your, your, your grandma fist into his abdomen, <laughs> You watch like, a little bit of the, the duck from earlier kind of out of his mouth. Um, uh, he rolls a 14. What's the DC for your stunning strike? My DC is also 14. So he just barely saved. Yeah. He's yep. not stunned. It's okay. He's, ugh, like kicks away the fist from the middle of the stomach as you spin around to the Minotaur and make the rest of your strikes. Okay, so many strikes. Um, so the next one will be a um, another quarter step attack, which is not going to hit anything. Um, and then the uh, a bonus attack. Also oh. just rolling twos. You're hitting the Minotaur, but the iron exterior of it is too strong and just ping, ping off of it. It's too well armored. Yep. Yep. That finishes your turn. Yes. That brings us to Toro and Jamila. What are you guys doing? Okay. You go. Okay. Um, I'm going to swing at... So, Adinus has not made a swing at anybody yet, or has Not yet, no. no? Okay. He rolled pretty low in the initiative charge. Okay. <laughs> and he's in danger because he just got gored by the little Minotaur? Yes, he's failed one death saving throw. Okay. I go after the little Minotaur. <laughs> the, the tiny one. Uh, do I need to declare action surge before or after? Oh. Fuck it. Action surge! Okay. Nice. Surge! Yeah. So what, you're okay. going after the... Minotaur. All right, go for it. After the tiny golem. Okay. Minotaur on Minotaur. 25 to hit. That hits. Go ahead and yeah. roll damage. Okay. Thirteen. Thirteen already. Thirteen damage. Strike two. Strike two. 17. 17 hits, roll damage. Okay. Yeah. 13. 13, alrighty. Offhand, dual wielding. Alrighty. Dagny, you're up next. 14. 14 does not hit. Does not the hit. third strike scrapes across its armor. Okay. You manage to carve a few times, you see the metal kind of splitting with each impact. The third one just careens off its shoulder. Okay. All right, that finished. Strike four. And then, yeah, for your, uh, let's go for it. 14. 14 nope. carves off again, not making impact on the golden's body. Strike five. That's 28. That hits. Roll damage. Okay. Hold on. That was not intentional. 11. 11. Nice. Okay. First number. <laughs> Last one. <laughs> 22. Final bit of damage. Roll it up. Dagny, what are you doing? Uh, I am well, going. Oh. 17. Oh, you're Jamila, sorry. sorry. No, you're right. 17, got it. Cool, all right. Um, yeah, uh, this makes me really mad. Uh, so I'm gonna rage. <laughs> nice! Uh, I'm actually gonna, yeah, I'm gonna pull my tight little little dress that doesn't fit, little skinny Mona, and just pieces of it go flying. It tears off, there's just like a little shred Shreds. of it over her general, yeah, that's like, right. <laughs> load self, go for it. Um, and uh, and I'm and I'm uh, I'm gonna lock and load my frenzy. I can't use it now, but I'll use it on the next one. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Two attacks against against Adina. I'm gonna Adina. So I'm gonna go right. right over there. Go for it. Get right into him. Okay. Um, what the hell? I'm gonna do it recklessly. All right. That is a seventeen. Seventeen hits. Hits. All right. Hold so in. that's the first one. The second, second one. one. Oh, I don't. Uh, Twelve was the seven. Uh, Nineteen. Nineteen hits as well. So All right. Damage so twice. two damages. First one. Nine plus four. Is 13. 13 for the first one. Second one. Oh. one. Six. Six points of damage. Whatever. I'm mad about it. <laughs> Carving with, the, with your blade back and forth. You watch as each strike carves across it. There's some sort of a, a barrier, a magical right. barrier that's trying to protect him, but you managed to cut through, and you, each blow, he's like, Ugh, uh, You see him like a little trickle of blood at the corner of his mouth. He's <laughs> not very well armored, though he was also not expecting to be surrounded in the middle of this hallway. Um, that finishes your turn. Through my turn. Dagny. And you have advantage on me for you. Exactly. Dagny, your turn. All right. I am going to get over to uh, Beetle. Mm -hmm. And I am going to cast Cure Wounds yes. at second levels. All righty. Bless you. Um, ooh. Okay. 14. Copy that. Thank you. So, Beetle, you come back to consciousness. You're on the ground looking up, and the first thing you see is Dagny. As she steps back, you see the back of Adinus and the Minotaur standing right in the doorway of the bedroom, facing away from you. Is that your turn, Dagny? Yeah, I'm gonna just prepare, I'm gonna put my hand on my holy symbol and get ready for for melee. Okay, Beetle. It's so perfect for a back attack. I just don't think we wanna kill this dude. 
kill him. I will forgive you. I mean, I will forgive you. Uh, I'll say, should I kill him? Yeah. <laughs> we have permission. Okay, Agni. Good, I'll take, a, I'll take a back attack. Okay, so. You get up from prone, but thankfully there's not a lot of space between you and him in this bedroom. So you, with the last year movement, you get up right behind Adina with him not noticing your approach with Jamila on the other side, keeping him distracted. Go for your attack. Uh, I really feel bad about this, which is Do the first know? time he's ever felt bad about anything. <laughs> Don't feel bad. Um, all right, so, uh, so 12. Well, oh, wait, wait, no, that's not true. That's a total lie. Oh, no, that's 12. That's right. <laughs> 12, unfortunately, does not hit. As you swing with your blade, it manages to, looks like pierce his back, but some sort of flash of blue shields his, his, the back portion of his shoulders and your blade just careens off, not making an impact. I think I feel okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm supposed to kill this guy. I know. Yeah. All right. That finishes your turn. It is now the golem's turn. The golem is going to go ahead and now it's kind of locked in arms with you, Toro. It's gonna to go ahead and make all of its strikes against you. First, it's gonna see if it recharges. Nope, it does not recharge. It's poison breath. The first strike against you is a, uh, it's 22. Yes, you hit. All right. <laughs> you take 15 points of bludgeoning damage from that strike. All right. The next one is a 16 to hit. 16 does not hit. Does not hit. This one, you managed to bring your axe up and deflect its, its secondary slam with its fist, kind of knocking it off kilter for a second. <laughs> It turns around and attempts to get you with its horns. Horn on horn action, 25. 25, uh, that hits. All right. Yes. It's a little minotaur and a big minotaur. Yep, it's just locked in, <laughs> in combat. Uh, that's going to be uh, 12 points of piercing damage. It's nothing. <laughs> and at this point, uh, Adinus, who's the bit, bit of blood at the corner of his mouth, seeing himself kind of surrounded here in the doorway, kind of pinned from all of you on all sides. He's kind of taking in and very quickly doing calculations in his head. <laughs> reaches out and puts his hand on the Minotaur. And you watch, and suddenly there's a flash of energy and his form begins to vanish with the Minotaur and his words, the last thing you hear before he vanishes from the center of this chamber is, I'll find you. He and the Minotaur are gone. You're all left standing there in the quiet, Damn it. still chamber of the... Slash the empty space where he used to be. You're carving ah. through, leaving these large gash marks in the door frame to the chamber where he was. On the ground, you can see the spattering of blood, kind of the last remnants of where he was. Damn. Curses. I gather the blood in case, in case we can clone him. <laughs> As you guys are all like angry, you watch as Rosie's on the ground, just <laughs> scraping up real fast and gathering. I'll go, I'll, I'll go back yeah. into, the, into the back room. Okay. Um, the mirror room. The mirror room. Yeah, I'll go back. Minutes. To the okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I also don't like the 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 floor. Can you heal me again if I fall? Yeah. All right, good. Um, I'll I'll start I'll start I'll I'll step on the carpet. What happens? Okay, you step onto the carpet, and your foot hits it, and can it's fine. I, can I take the the journal from him first? <laughs> sure. So you take the journal. Can I keep it safe? You. Yeah, she doesn't really know about the journal though. Didn't you tell? Oh, you didn't tell us. Oh, then oh never yeah. Mind. Never it's, mind. It's my, it's my it's thing. I, I'm just saying. Yeah, no worries. So you're never there. Never mind. Uh, the carpet, and the more you look at it now, you can see the carpet is a maze of lines. Some that end, some that curve. Oh, this sounds like a terrible idea. I bounce back out. <laughs> okay. I bounce, this, is, this is dumb. Um, All right. I don't trust the carpet, and quite frankly, I don't want to go in there. I go and stand on the carpet. Okay. You're standing on the carpet. Mm -hmm. I get out. And it's a maze. It, the carpet itself is a series of, of, of gray and black lines that form a maze. Mm -hmm. Is there anything familiar about it? I mean, no. you're a minotaur. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> mazes are kind of your jam, yes. man. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, have I met this maze have, before? <laughs> <laughs> Am I attracted to the maze? Is it a hot maze? Yeah, no. Yeah, yes. Is it a hot um, maze? Uh, go ahead and roll an investigation check. Okay. <laughs> Is it a hot maze? Uh, I start trying to sketch the maze. Okay. Like, like you know. Mm -hmm. I do not like this maze. That maze is not your speed. No. Mm -hmm. All right, you just make a sketch of the maze. Mm -hmm. um, is um, is it a, a flying carpet? Do you move the carpet? Yeah. All right, as you shift the carpet from place, you watch as the lines begin to glow. The room begins to, begins to get hot, extremely hot. Get out! Start taking fire damage. Shit. <laughs> you take three points of fire damage. Uh, a moment later, you take six points of fire damage. <laughs> All right, I get the point. I, I stand on the desk. All right, you jump up onto the desk. Yeah. You suffer 12 points of fire damage. Yeah. Right. The entire chamber is heating up like a furnace. 
Okay, I, I grab on the chandelier and swing. All right. As Toro exits the mirror and you gather yourselves there, seemingly feeling like you have the information you require to possibly implicate Adinas when you return, you manage to complete the necessities of this particular mission. Though you lost your quarry, who is now out there and probably knows who you are, <laughs> Damn it. you feel you have what you need and return to Blackstaff in hopes that this was exactly, or at least enough, of what Vajra required. And that's where we're going to end the session. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, bring a Minotaur to a dinner party. This will be interesting. <laughs> Who brought that guy? <laughs> Thank you guys for playing. That was great. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you. All right, and we'll see what else the rest of the craziness this event has for the next couple of days and the rest of the evening. So stay tuned, stick around. A lot of fun things coming. <laughs>